In polycythemia vera, there are increased blood cell levels due to overproduction by the bone marrow, which is a soft tissue found within the bones. Normally, about 45% of the total blood volume is made up of erythrocytes, or red blood cells, and their main function is to carry oxygen to tissues and bring carbon dioxide to the lungs so it can be expired. This value is called the hematocrit. In polycythemia vera, there's an increase in red blood cell production. It typically begins with a mutation in a single hematopoietic stem cell, which gives rise to red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. In 90% of the affected individuals, there's a mutation of the Janus kinase 2, or JAK2, gene. Normally, the kidneys produce erythropoietin, which is a hormone that binds to receptors on the hematopoietic stem cells and activates the JAK2 gene. When that happens, it causes a cell to divide and thus produce more blood cells. However, when there's a mutation, it keeps JAK2 gene activated, and these cells are able to divide even in the absence of erythropoietin. The mutated cells proliferate and rapidly become the predominant hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow. In time, these cells start to die out, and that's when scar tissue forms. At that point, the bone marrow can no longer produce blood cells, leading to anemia or low red blood cell levels, thrombocytopenia or low platelet levels, and leukopenia or low white blood cell levels. This is known as a spent phase, and once the disease is in the spent phase, it's really a different disease altogether. At that point, it's myelofibrosis. The most common symptoms of polycythemia vera are fatigue, dizziness, increased sweating, redness in the face, blurred vision, and itchy skin, especially after a hot shower. Itchiness develops due to an increased number of basophils and mast cells, which contain histamine that causes itching when released. Splenomegaly, or spleen enlargement, is also common because the excess red blood cells build up in the spleen, which usually helps with removing excess cells. High turnover of red blood cells can cause buildup of uric acid, which leads to the inflammation of joints or gout and kidney stones. Individuals with polycythemia vera are more prone to blood clots and their complications like stroke, heart attack, deep vein thrombosis, and Bud Chiari syndrome, which is when liver veins are blocked by a blood clot. Sometimes, the disorder can be found during a routine blood test. Common findings include increased hemoglobin, or hematocrit levels, as well as an increased white blood cell and platelet count. Most individuals have decreased erythropoietin, but some individuals have normal or even elevated erythropoietin levels. Bone marrow tissue examination or biopsy can be done to look for signs of fibrosis, and genetic testing can be done to look for the JAK2 gene mutation. Most individuals require phlebotomy, which is when the blood is drawn through a vein and removed every few months. This blood isn't donated for other individuals, but can be used for autologous donation so the donor can use it in the future if needed. Myelosuppressive medications, like hydroxyurea, as well as a JAK2 inhibitor, ruxolitinib, can be used to lower red blood cell formation. Ruxolitinib is also particularly helpful with relieving symptoms like itching. Other medications that can also help relieve symptoms include antihistamines, hydroxazine, and aspirin. Aspirin is also used to help prevent clotting. In the spent phase, Individuals may need blood transfusions at regular intervals. All right, as a quick recap, polycythemia vera is an overproduction of blood cells, often caused by a JAK2 mutation within hematopoietic cells in the bone marrow. It can lead to an elevated hemoglobin and hematocrit and predispose an individual to developing blood clots. Treatment includes removing blood at regular intervals, medication to lower blood cell formation, and prevention of blood clots. Patients may progress to myelofibrosis, which represents a spent phase of the bone marrow, where individuals may need blood transfusions or more aggressive therapy.